Hello, I'm Charlie Brooker and welcome to So Wrong It's Right, a panel show that actively welcomes mankind's biggest failures. A bit like a travelodge or the <laughs> smash hits poll winners party. <laughs> This show is about when things go wrong. Like many of us, I've experienced the bitter taste of disappointment, or KFC. <laughs> I would like to believe that by extending our understanding of what is truly wrong with the world, we may one day cast aside all our differences of race, creed or class, come together as a people and with one voice finally demand, politely yet firmly, an immediate end to Piers Morgan's career. <laughs> Might happen. Uh, it's often hard to recognise failure until it's staring you in the face. Uh, please welcome my guests. <laughs> Mr Lee Mack. <laughs> Miss Josie Long. <laughs> and Mr Tom Basden. <laughs> now, the first round is called Wrong Time, Wrong Place. I'll be asking my guests to trawl through the murky waters of their memories in an attempt to out-wrong each other with stories from their own pasts. This week's question is, what's the worst thing that's ever happened to you on public transport? Uh, I think the transport system is incredible. From my house in London, I can jump on a train in the afternoon and a few hours later enjoy a night out in Newcastle city centre. Or I can just walk to the kitchen and stand in front of an open fridge wearing a T-shirt and punching myself in the face. <laughs> Lee Mack, Lee Mack, what is the worst thing you've ever done on public transport? I used to be blue coat at Pontins, right? Yeah, strap in, ladies, it's rock and roll. <laughs> and uh, I was running for a bus cos uh, I was going for me one day out for the whole summer season to meet a girl in Norwich Town Centre. <laughs> it's sounding more glamorous as this story goes on, isn't it? <laughs> and my mate helped me out. My best friend held the jacket open for me. He said, come on, you're going to miss the bus. And I put the jacket on and I ran onto the bus. And what I didn't realise is, you know when someone puts on your back, kick me? <laughs> He'd put, I am an absolute prat, in massive paper, and he'd sewn it on. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know when people go, I wonder how he got that sticker on the back without him noticing. They must have thought I was paralysed from the waist <laughs> up. I couldn't feel anything. And it's the fact that, if it had said like, a really offensive swear word, it would have been clear that someone else had done it. But it's the fact that it just said, I am an absolute prat. That, that th sort of suggested maybe that I'd done it. And I, <laughs> and I spent the whole of the journey from Yarmouth to Norwich, which is a good 40 minutes on the bus, with everybody on the bus laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> Surely, I mean, you know, you're a comic. This must have been a good Not experience. in 1988, I wasn't. I was an absolute prat. <laughs> well, I feel quite sorry for you. Did you do anything to get the bloke back? I shot him. <laughs> In the back. <laughs> well, I actually did, that's not true. I took the legs off his bed, but then balanced them back on so that when he went into bed, it took a few seconds before it collapsed. <laughs> Those are both really time consuming things. Like, he was sewing for about two hours. Like, oh, he's going to. And then you, like. It was, it was very much a DIY noodle craft based competitive. <laughs> I had the, the easiest way, I mean, if you, if you put a rubber sheet on someone's bed and then cover it with icing sugar and then put their regular sheet on top of that, during the night they get glazed. Like a donut. Because, <laughs> apparently, this is true, because they sweat, you know, you heat up and you sweat during the night and the sugar seeps through and it glazes That'll you. Be fun. <laughs> That's a tip. That's just a treat for everyone, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Josie, Josie Long, how about you? What's the worst thing? I thought it was what's the worst thing that's happened to you on public transport. Although I've, um, I've started doing a thing where I try and talk to strangers on public transport, but I, I've done it in more and more tenuous ways. Like, uh, there were two nuns on the other day next to me, and I went, Are you nuns? <laughs> <laughs> that was my opening gambit. And, and that's and then not after... tenuous, that's just kind of bewildered and stupid, isn't well, it? I couldn't think of another in. It's a question, isn't it? Yeah. I, I would think that they might be, like, going to a fancy dress party or something. Exactly. And I thought, I've got to get an in with them, and then I can have a chat about nuns. But it turns out they were really frosty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like... When you say frosty, you mean frosty like they've been in a bed with Charlie <laughs> and been glazed. <laughs> So, I mean, so, so, I, you, so you're quite well behaved, but what's the worst thing you've witnessed then? The worst, I, well, all the time my weight fluctuates, and so sometimes I'll be more chunky. Uh, it's fluctuating a lot now. Yeah, I'm right finding now. that quite difficult to say next <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm a shape-shifting ghost monster. <laughs> um, but when I was a bit chubby, I was waiting harmlessly at the bus stop, looking at some Polaroids that I'd taken of me and my friends mucking around, not 
in a well, that sounds creepy having said it out loud but just like at a party and um <laughs> <laughs> at a normal party and this bloke next to me apropos of nothing went i bet you'll have a boy <laughs> I was like, uh, what? He thought I was looking at scans. <laughs> and, but like, it didn't even look How like scans. How intimate were these photographs? Well, they, were, they were nothing. They were just like me doing double defos. <laughs> no idea why you interpreted... I mean, a boy would do that in the womb rather than a girl. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then I went, I'm not pregnant. These are just photos. And then we just had to sit there. <laughs> Tom. Tom, uh, what's the worst thing that... Well, you know, I've got a story that happened to a friend of mine, and it's, he was on a, a, a bus in Rome, and he, what he'd done is he'd, he'd tied a pink string to his wallet because he was worried about pickpockets, and he sort of put this, bound it up and then put it in his pocket. And he was on the bus, and he saw this string unravel, and the string kind of went down the other end of the bus. He's like, oh, God, right. And so he started, uh, like, following this string. And he traced it to this, uh, to this woman who, was sort of, uh, who looked like she was holding a baby, but it's just a load of towels, because uh, they're clever. They was think this about... a dream? No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, he, he, he traced it to this woman, and um, he, sort of, he kind of approached her, and, and, and what he said, he, and genuinely, I, I really like it, he's quite a well-spoken guy, and he said, um, I'm terribly sorry, but I think you might have stolen my wallet. <laughs> Uh, and she, she didn't understand him, obviously, she was Italian and, uh, and he didn't speak any Italian. So he started gesturing to the string and gesturing to the baby. And she was sort of just kind of a bit confused. And, um, and then... And that wasn't string, it was an umbilical cord. <laughs> <laughs> that is how they snap it as well, just with their hands these days. Or is it? No. What, in Italy? Yeah, in Italy, yeah. Is, yeah. yeah. I was animals. being strangled by uh, my umbilical cord as I was being born. It was wrapped around my neck. That's, that's coloured my view of this Ooh. stinking universe. I don't think it was on purpose, though. You shouldn't blame your mother for that. How close were you to death? Uh, I don't know. I, don't, I, was, I was sort of turning all sorts of interesting colours. They had to, like, you, tell... You were Sorry, basically, this is like... You, tell, like you were actually bored, angry, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you basically came out and going, all right, someone's going to pay for this. <laughs> Start with Radio 4. <laughs> So he didn't get his wallet back? No, no, he thought it was better just to avoid confrontation. <laughs> Lee, you, you sat on a bus all the way to Norwich uh, with I am a massive prat on your back. Party? And this bloke next to me, apropos of nothing, went, I bet you'll have a boy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was like, what? He thought I was looking at scans. Uh, Josie, you start in awkward conversations with strangers. And, Tom, you, your friend had a, a wallet stolen that he sort of chased a dreamlike pink ribbon yeah. <laughs> to a woman with some sort of imaginary swaddling child. <laughs> um, I, think, uh, I think, Josie, yours is the, yours is the most ill-advised uh, behaviour, so it's a point to you. The next round is called Do Your Worst, and it's a test of my guests' ability to spew terrible ideas. This week I've asked them to pitch me their plan for a new high-concept restaurant chain. Uh, experimental chef Heston Blumenthal is opening a chain restaurant. He's going to sell boiled chains. Probably <laughs> on a bed of pureed antelope and marmalade. <laughs> Sounds lip-smacking in that I'd rather be smacked in the lips. Uh, <laughs> Being a top restaurant chef isn't easy. Some people criticise Gordon Ramsay, but I've learned a lot from him. Just last night, I prepared a venison stew while screaming obscenities into a stranger's face. <laughs> Josie, uh, uh, come on, hit me with a restaurant chain idea. C can I just say, before I pitch my one, that I really hate chain restaurants so much. They just depress me utterly. So, because you might as well just go in straight away and go, I give up. I want even my leisure time to be a compromise. The whole, <laughs> I give up. I've got one life and I'm choosing to do this. I hate it. Right, but... <laughs> That's a good slogan for the advert. <laughs> for the <laughs> harvesters. I've got one life and I'm choosing to do this. <laughs> Go on, then. What's your restaurant um, chain idea? OK, right, so you would sit down and it would be called Teacups and Daisies, right? And it would be really cute and they would have um, gingham tablecloths and you would sit down and they would bring out one of those really, really, really cutest thing in the world, teacup pigs, and then they would stab it in the stomach in front of you and it would be crying, <laughs> like, weep, like... Ah! But, like, the cutest crying you could imagine. That would be the worst thing I could imagine happening. <laughs> because all I want in the world
goal just to have two teacup pigs and call them Professor and Mrs Porkington? <laughs> So basically, what you're saying is like an, an appalling act of cruelty. Yeah. The start of the yeah. I quite like. I wanted to go to a restaurant where there were like animals crucified. On the <laughs> <laughs> Live, like, ah! and you just cut bits off. And it's called Happy Now. <laughs> um, Lee Mac, what's your idea for a high concept restaurant chain? Have you heard of these blind um, themed restaurants? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you heard of these? Yes, there's a restaurant which is pitch black. Pitch black, called Don Le Noir, which is obviously French for we couldn't get a top chef, so we had to go for the novelty factor. <laughs> <laughs> the idea is you go in, it's pitch black, and it's supposed to be more senses to your, to your, to your you know, more sense on your mouth. And right, so... and, 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 and in your lap as you, like, spill. <laughs> yeah, more pain in your crotch. <laughs> but I hate small talk in restaurants, so adopting that theme, instead of a, a, a blind one, it's a deaf one, and everyone is given earplugs so you can't hear anybody else. <laughs> and you don't have to make small talk, and the waiter can be a bit more honest and enjoy his day as well and can say, do you want to have a look at the, you have a look at the dessert, Charlie, you fat get? <laughs> you know, just more honesty. I don't want to make small talk, Charlie. Like, I mean, how does the menu... You just point at stuff on the menu? So it's like being abroad. It's like just being... <laughs> that's exactly what it's like. If they don't understand your point, if they really don't understand, you shout. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it's like. Tora Molinos, it's going to be called. <laughs> Tom, what's yeah. your idea for a chain oh, restaurant? My, well, my uh, chain of restaurants would be called Cramp. It, what you do is you, you'd go in and then you'd sort of, there'd be a big pool and you'd have to get in and tread water in the pool and then sort of food would float over on, like, little lilos. <laughs> and you'd sort of have to just, like, nibble at it and stuff. And then it's, it would more just be a massive... It's not a great business model, just a massive sort of thing to prove my mum wrong that you definitely don't get cramp if you eat and swim at the same time. <laughs> Would it be waterproof food? Sort of floaty food? Would you like, like on a, like a pool full of gravy? Yeah, yeah, apples is good. I, ideally floaty food. But, I mean, otherwise you could just put... You, you know, don't you want to eat be... things that are floating towards you, traditionally. <laughs> <laughs> is there going to be a changing room where you're toweling down? You don't want that after you've just eaten, watching everybody else drying off their haunches. <laughs> you haven't thought this not, through. Not massively. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, okay, uh, Josie, you had the sort of pig slaughtering restaurant. Uh, Lee, your idea was for a restaurant where everyone si it simulates deafness. And Tom, yours was a sort of floating, horrible, yeah. cramp, well, score settling, petty yeah. score well, I settling. I didn't use the word horrible. You're trying to sort of, uh, <laughs> you know, put in. Right, charming. Thank you, yeah. Pointless. <laughs> well, um, you know what, uh, Josie, I'm going to give the point to you. <laughs> The, uh, the next round is called This Putrid Modern Hell. It's a sort of hate rally against the 21st century's biggest little annoyances. I'll be asking my guests to nominate the thing they hate most about today. And the best answer wins a point. Uh, it's about hell. Uh, no one can agree on what constitutes hell. Jean-Paul Sartre said, hell is other people. Which is another way of saying, all my friends are philosophers. <laughs> The world has changed beyond recognition in recent years. If you showed an iPhone to Sir Walter Raleigh, chances are you'd either be having a boring dream or an exciting night of grave digging. <laughs> modern, technology, modern technology has replaced many of our traditional comforts. Instead of a pet, I've got a mouse. Instead of a wife, I've got Wi-Fi. And instead of friends, I've got absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, Tom. What annoys you most about the modern world? Um, on my way here tonight, I was, I was cycling here. Um, the, the car in front of me just put its hazards on and then did some of the most dangerous driving I've ever seen. And I think that it's kind of a way of people just flagging up that they're about to do something that's potentially life-threatening. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it's for, really. It's kind of like, it's just sort of saying, well, sorry, but guess what? You know, you, you might well die. And uh, <laughs> Here it comes, yeah. And it's that kind of that attitude with hazards that just irritates me so much. You just kind of, you can't stop here, obviously you can't, but can't I? Well, these winking lights disagree. <laughs> and, and just, just... 
<laughs> is it, yeah, I'm not that familiar with the highway. I can't drive. I'm not qualified to drive, so I'm not that familiar with the highway code. Are you allowed to do anything yeah. you like after switching your hazard? Well, not anything, Trevor. <laughs> no, you know, this not, might hold up in court. Depends what you've got in mind. You can't park outside somewhere, like, kill everyone inside, get no, back no. in your car. The, the, minimum, the minimum requirement is... I know I killed four of them, but my hazard lights were on. That's not <laughs> that I think you must cause a hazard. That's, what, that's the only thing that's sort of required of you. When so you it's like a challenge. Like... Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Mode yeah. For cars. Yeah. So you just switch your hazards on, you can mount the pavement, you can yeah. just knock dust over. I mean, it's over. a nonsensical thing, because it's sort of it's saying I'm going to go left and I'm going to go right at the same time. So it's kind of, it's sort of just declaring that you're going to challenge the laws of logic. I, I, I used to say that every week you would have a life-threatening experience, which would mean you'd arrive at work really sort of full of yourself for having survived an ordeal, yeah. which was kind of quite good, because you don't get that sort of... You don't on the tube every day. It's not like you, every day on the tube somebody nearly pushes you in front of a train. <laughs> no, it's like if you were riding the tube and you were sort of just wobbling on the platform every day, you go, ah, and then you yeah. just sort of step back. It's, yeah, it's a bit so like it's that. So I, I welcome the hazard lights. I welcome challenges. Challenge mode and sort of that's exciting, isn't it? Does it? They should play a dramatic chord when they're doing it. The hazard should go on. There should be a sort of thun, dun dun. <laughs> uh, Josie, um, I, the thing I really, really hate is when a new supermarket is opening and they write your new Sainsbury's local is opening here or your new Marks and Spencers is opening here, and it's it's like they're taunting me because they know I don't want them. And they know that it's, it's like they're forcing it on me, but they're not even really because it's not. I'll let you in on a secret. It's not really mine. <laughs> like it's not. And I know for a fact because my behaviour in there has been challenged, right? <laughs> yeah. And if it was mine, then I'd be allowed to do whatever I wanted. And um, <laughs> but also, it just—it's like it's. It just symbolised everything. It's like, you're m and insofar as if you come in and pay us more money than you've got, we'll give you fruit that doesn't taste as nice as you think the fruit should. <laughs> and like... Oh. Well, this is and not just a home. pear, it's a disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> and then... Go back... I said that to my wife last night. <laughs> Never blue. <laughs> Maybe it would inspire you to start your own supermarket chain and then open a branch near their houses. <laughs> and put adverts in the paper saying, opening soon, my supermarket. <laughs> and then not let anyone in. <laughs> I actually really adore supermarkets, and I've got a real... It doesn't like, sound ambivalent. like you do. <laughs> well, no, well I, I like to walk around really big ones and just look at all the stuff and think, oh, if there was the apocalypse right now, I'd be so sorted. <laughs> <laughs> like, if the doors got shut, if I got shut in, I'd be like... That's, I think oh, that's going to be uh, Morrison's Christmas... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> next year. If the apocalypse was now, you'd be sorted. <laughs> What is it about the? What is it that's so annoying about that sort of my? This is your this, your that because you're worth it. Your one is totally. No, it's not because you're worth it. Although that is annoying. It's it's not just that it's disingenuous. It's that it's completely not true. Like it is not mine. Stop saying it's it doesn't. Nothing belongs to me. I can't afford to buy a house. Look at mm. me. It also and then it implies, makes me... implies somehow you care. That much. Oh, it's my. Oh, that's my Sainsbury's yeah, is open. That's good. Exactly. Isn't that exciting. <laughs> Lee, do you know what I did yesterday? I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I bought some milk from the shop. A couple of hours later, I bought a pasty, and I ate it. And then, <laughs> I had a little lie down. <laughs> And then, when I woke up, I went to the toilet. And then, I had a cup of tea. Do you think that was a particularly interesting story? Not, no, not really. Well then, can you answer me this, Charlie? Why do people like you insist on doing Twitter? <laughs> Twitter, surely it's the present tense. Now, now your lie down may not seem significant to you, and it turns out it wasn't. But how were you to make a value judgment at the time? Oh, I'm not an idiot. I did my research. <laughs> I know what you did yesterday, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, 
Honestly, if, if, if somebody like bought milk or had to lie down, obviously that would, that would just be utterly futile and boring. Who would write something like that? But imagine, ladies and gentlemen, if I'd have done something like bought a phone. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd want to know about that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Tell me, Charlie, have you bought a phone recently? <laughs> yes, you I, bought I, it I, yesterday. You not only bought it, I might, you wanted to I'm, share I'm... the experience with so many of your... <laughs> Followers. That was... It disturbs me, the idea that you think you've got followers. <laughs> like Christ. I am the leader and you are my followers. You're, you're tearing down the few things I cling to, Lee. <laughs> I, don't, I don't... What I don't understand about Twitter is the fact that people I really respect and really like and think, I think who are funny, and you, right? <laughs> Like you, there's so many comedians now who do... It's like a zombie curse film where you think you and your mates are all together and then one by one they start falling off. You know, you go... One joining. They join the weirdos like you and they start doing the Twitter. <laughs> what? But then they, they fall for it like some sort of hypnotic thing. They go, no, no, it's really good. And then you try. <laughs> it's like pyramid selling. You go, what, why is it good? And they've been hypnotised. They go, because I can tell people I had a poo. And it's just... <laughs> They're like I they've think, been yeah, transfixed I think, with I this thing. I think it's like an almighty sheet of bubble wrap. There's a vague satisfaction in popping each individual bubble, but it's no. pointless. No, no, no. No, no, I'll tell you what, Charlie, let's take that analogy a little bit further. What it's like is a load of people <laughs> popping the bubble wrap and then going, look what I've done! <laughs> It's really hard to mount any kind of defence because I can only think in terms of 140 characters. <laughs> it's, it's just... It's the idea that it's the, it's the medium, you see. They're celebrating the medium, not the content. You're celebrating the fact that you can do it rather than what you're doing with it. You know, I really liked Eric Morecambe, but I would have gone off him massively if, before computers, he'd have gone round ringing people up going, Hello! <laughs> Today I bought a sandwich. <laughs> some other random person. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> I bought a sandwich! <laughs> He's going, I'm going off this man because it turns out he's a self-obsessed freak. <laughs> It's not just you, Charlie. <laughs> it's all of them. <laughs> and I'm sure, I, even before she opens her mouth, that Josie's going to say, I'll have you know that I have been led into the dark. <laughs> no, I just, for the, for the first time in my life, I really genuinely want to go, get with the now, Grandad. <laughs> do you know why I like Twitter? Is, oh, it, you do? What a surprise. <laughs> Hey, get with the yesterday, grandchild. <laughs> because I don't follow people who go, just got in, I'm going to sit down. I follow people who go, have a look at this link. And then you click on the link and it's some fascinating magazine article you wouldn't have otherwise picked up upon because like, they're a research scientist. Or you're not allowed to know because you won't do it. <laughs> oh, now it sounds interesting. I'm interested. Oh. It's just about sitting down. I wasn't interested. Oh, now there's science involved. No, you're not allowed. Can I just ask Charlie, Charlie, what kind of man lets his daughter fight his argument? <laughs> you're sitting very sheepishly in the corner. I can't, I, it's because I kind of, I, yeah, I, I can, You know I it's think, evil. <laughs> Explain the, I the best talk. argument so far of the night is it links to a magazine article. <laughs> Buy a magazine, you lazy cow, and just read it. <laughs> Do your own research. Don't expect Charlie Brookers to go, oh, I found a magazine article. <laughs> Me. But there's nothing wrong with people talking to each other. Talking? Oh, no. It's not talking, you weirdo. <laughs> Cardboard in crayon, I think you're sexy, and posting it through the neighbour's letterbox. And no! she goes, What are you doing? And go, There's nothing wrong with talking. <laughs> you are writing irrelevant rubbish to strangers. Strangers who don't know you, but you have in your mental head think that they're following you, you freak. <laughs> well, that's my job. It's not your job. <laughs> 
what is the difference between writing something on Twitter and writing something in a newspaper where I'm writing random I'll tell you gibberish what, I'll for tell people you what, who I don't know None of the great classics read. of literature have ever been written in less than 140 characters. <laughs> you're not writing anything. You just... Don't tell me that you're going, I've got some artistic thing that I want to get off my chest. No, and tell I'm them. not. I just you want tell, to say I well, bought a new phone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And your, your regular article in The Guardian says, page 27, Charlie Brooker. Oh, I like that. Page 27. Read it out to me, love. OK. Today I bought a phone. <laughs> what else does it say, Lee? That's it. That's all he's written this week. Yeah, but you... He's obviously been in a car crash. Yeah, but you... <laughs> You've got to say you just have to spin it out for 850 words in a newspaper. At least on Twitter, it's over quicker. <laughs> like a really efficient bowel. Do you movement. know what? <laughs> okay, at the end of that, I think we've established. Uh, Tom, you don't. You dislike hazard lights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's supermarkets with a false sense of community and <laughs> You kind of seem to hate me. <laughs> I don't hate you, Charlie. You I hate, hate me, what you, you hate me and my, and my attention-seeking use of modern technology. <laughs> um, and I'm going to give you a point. <laughs> okay. Anyway. To the final round, uh, in which I'll be asking my guests a series of quick-fire questions. As always, the wrongest answer to each one wins a point. First off, what is the worst love song lyric? Oh, I know this. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely do. Um, there's the song Perfect Ten by Beautiful South, which is so embarrassing. This well, there's two. It's the Perfect Ten by Beautiful South when it goes, oh, I can't, oh, I'm so embarrassed to even try and, oh. It goes, um, when he's at the gate with his big fat eight. I hate it. Is it um, there was that uh, meatloaf. Song, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if he did he ever specify what <laughs> what it was. Because she says there's a woman in that, and she says, "Would you hose me down with holy water if I got too hot?" He'd do that. <laughs> of course, he'd <laughs> do that with, without a second's thought. Yeah, of course, he would. Um, I don't know. That's quite. There's, if there's a hose pipe ban, or <laughs> <laughs> that's a point to you, Josie. <laughs> That sound tells us everyone's had enough. And uh, <laughs> the winner, that's, that sound genuinely, that's the end of the show. And uh, that means that Josie is this week's worst oh. contestant. <laughs> well done, Josie. Well done to you, uh, and thanks to my other guests, uh, Lee Mack and Tom Basden. <laughs> and that's the end of the show. Good night. <laughs>